Hello student uh, this is professor dakne sir uh, welcome you once again in our uh, online lecture series of system programming and the operating system so today we are going to start with the unit number 3 and today we have the first lecture on that so name of our unit number 3 is the language translator and uh, under the language translator we have the different things to be discussed that we will discuss in the further lectures now our to be uh, today's topic to be discussed with the language translator and some other things related with that today we will discuss okay now uh, these are the contents related to the language translator we are going to discuss okay <coughs> i mean that <coughs> first we discuss about the what exactly the language translator is what is the need of the language translator uh, then uh, what are the different types of the language translator and difference between the different kind of language translators okay these things we will discuss and then in the today's lecture only we will discuss about the uh, initial part of the <coughs> phases of the uh, particular uh, translator that is the compiler we are going to see okay now let's see what exactly is the language translator is now what is the language translator <coughs> that point uh, when we have discussed the previous two units in the first unit also we have discussed the things related with that so from the name only you can understand what exactly is the translator is translator is nothing but what translator which convert the one particular uh, what we can say the thing into the another form one particular representation of the another form of representation okay so that is the tr translator conversion from one particular form into the another form or conversion from one representation into the another representation that is the translator okay now here our point is the language translator <laughs> so here uh, this is a kind of uh, translator which is related with the language which will convert the one particular form of a language into the another form of language understood now which kind of language is get converted into the which other kind of language now let's see now what exactly language translator is it any kind of hardware or software etc yes it is a kind of software or it is a program system program okay it is a kind of system program which convert the source code into the object code source code means the in the language using which the <coughs> programmer write the program the language using which the programmer write the code now source code can be in the form of the any higher level language like c c++ java c sharp etc etc also you can write the source code uh, using the assembly language also okay so as compare with the higher level language like c c++ java assembly language is a kind of low level but if you compare the assembly language with the actual machine code then assembly language will be also considered as a higher level language as compare with the actual machine code that is in the form of the binary zero as one zeros and one so what the language translator does it is a kind of system program that convert the source code into the object code now what is the object code object code is nothing but the machine code okay object code is nothing but the machine code okay and it's a simple scenario i have shown you here what exactly the language translator what it is doing so here you can see the input given to the language translator then language translator convert this input into the object code so it is being also mentioned as a converter okay so i told you what can be the source code the source code in case of higher level language it can be the c it can be the c++ it can be a java it can be a, any other higher level languages and now object code is nothing but the machine code which is in the form of the zeros and one okay so that is nothing but the language translator is okay now next point comes what is exactly the need of language translator why we need the language translator okay now we know computer only understand the which kind of language computer only understand the zeros and one binary language okay that is a machine code only they understood by the computer 
okay so computer doesn't understand any kind of source code which we are considering it as a higher level language c c++ java directly or computer cannot also understand the assembly language directly okay so so there must be a some medium or some program is needed which will convert that particular uh, source program written in the higher level language into the machine code and then that machine code can be understood by the computer understood so uh, so language translator job is nothing but what converting the particular program into the machine readable form okay in simple words converting the particular program or the code into the machine readable machine readable form that is the work of the language translator okay so here you can uh, from this we can say the programmer write the source code and then translator convert that source code into the machine readable format that machine readable format you can call it as a object code or the machine code also okay so i hope you have got the point why we need the language translator why we need the reason is what because machine can't understand the higher level language directly so that is the reason that source code or the higher level language code need to be convert into the machine readable form and who is doing that work of the conversion that is done by the language translator so two or four marks question can be asked on this now next important point that we must uh, discuss that is nothing but types of the language translator which are the <laughs> different types of the language translator okay so while we have discussed the previous two units that time also we have gone through these uh, points but specifically in details we are having that here in this unit now there are the three main types of the language translator that you also aware one is the assembler second is the compiler okay and third is the interpreter okay so these are the mainly considered as a types of the language translator okay so this assembler is also the one system program compiler is also the one system program interpreters are also the system program which does the work of translation of one form of a language into the another form okay now we have already seen in the first unit details about the assembler as a one of the language translator okay <coughs> now <coughs> if you see assembler is the kind of language translator that uh, convert the assembly language code into the object code okay now this is also regarding the language translator same point we have discussed but here what you should understand the source code which is given as a <coughs> input to the assembler that source code is the assembly language program that source code is what assembly language program the file with the dot extension asm okay not the file with the dot extension dot c dot cpp dot java like this assembler only can translate which kind of language into the object code or into the machine code only the assembly language program and for that to convert the assembly language program as a source code into the object code or the machine code we need the kind of language translator and that language translator is nothing but called as what the assembler now related with the assembler all the details we have seen in the first unit only like uh, what is the format of instruction of assembly language then what exactly the assembly language is it is nothing but what it is a it is a, a combination of symbolic instruction like instruction we, which is being also referred as the mnemonic of course like move add sub this kind of things already we have seen also we have to utilize the different kind of directives in the assembly language programming like start end then ltrg origin these are all the things also we have discussed okay and how how the this particular translator convert this assembly language program to the machine code that with the help of the different types of the assembler we have seen like single pass assembler we have seen two pass assembler we have seen what exactly is that process that how the conversion of source code which is assembly language program into the machine code happens that everything details we have seen during the physical lectures in the first unit itself so this is the first type of language translator that is the as i said assembler okay now second one which we have to concentrate in the third unit our third unit is completely related with this language translator that is the compiler just like in the first unit we have seen the all the details related with the language translator assembler 
in this in that we have seen the types of the assembler etc 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 okay now in case of the third unit our focus will be on the one of the language translator that is the compiler so related with the compiler everything details we will discuss in this unit okay which kind of language is processed by the compiler etc etc okay so here i have mentioned the what exactly the compiler is so compiler is also the one of the language translator what exactly it does it convert the higher level language code into the object code or higher level code into the machine code okay so now as in case of the previous language translator we have seen the source code was in the form of the assembly language but in case of the compiler source code is is the form of the higher level like source code will be <coughs> in the form of the c c++ java this kind of code is considered as a source code which is given as a input to the compiler and then compiler convert this kind of higher level language use into the machine code or into the object code okay so that is the thing related with the compiler okay as compared with the assembler now uh, another important uh, feature related to the compiler is what the compiler convert the whole code at a time into the machine code what the compiler does compiler convert the whole code in the sense all the instruction of your program get converted to the machine code at a single time okay let's see uh, how actually it is happening so this is consider this is your source program these are the different instruction in your source program line 1 line 2 and accordingly the instructions okay now what the compiler does when you compile your program you already have the experience of compilation of the program so when you compile your program the compiler read the instruction of your instruction of your program line by line what the compiler does read the instruction of your program line by line the way here i have shown and but when it convert it it convert the whole program into the object code it is it is this is very important the compiler not convert the instruction by instruction into the object code it never convert the one instruction into the object code then second instruction into the object code not like that the compiler does what compiler convert the whole object code at a time into the machine code that is the thing here i have demonstrated okay so i hope you are understood now this point can help you when you are when the question will be asked the comparison between the various kind of language translator like assembler compiler and the last one that we are going to discuss that is the interpreter okay so third important type of the uh, language translator here you can see that is nothing but the interpreter okay now here you can see interpreter is a language translator that convert the higher level language code into the object code that convert what higher level language code into the machine code so the same definition we have seen in case of the compiler also but here difference is what the interpreter convert the particular higher level language code line by line but in case of the in case of the compiler we have seen compiler convert the higher language higher level language code into the machine code at a single time understood but here what the interpreter is doing interpreter converting into the machine code line by line so here you can see the same figure description same figure scenario but only the difference is what what the compiler is uh, interpreter is doing interpreter converting your uh, uh, source language code into the machine code line by line now there are the different languages which need to utilize the interpreter now you can see if you see the java language now java language required the compiler plus interpreter so java language required the both the kind of language translated during the compilation and execution of the program okay now if you see the scenario uh, just as compared with the compiler we have seen here you can see these are the different instruction of your program okay line 1 instruction 1 instruction 2 instruction 3 likewise okay now what the interpreter also does in the second step interpreter also read the instruction line by line but when you go to the third step now in case of this third step the <coughs> interpreter not convert the all the instruction into the machine code at a time what the interpreter does interpreter convert your source code into the object code line by line you can see line by line where as compare with this we have seen the compiler what the compiler does 
compiler convert your source code into the machine code at a single time only all the instruction at a time here execution also happens line by line in case of the interpreter here you can see now this case in case of the compiler was what execution was happening at a single time okay so this is the exact difference you can observe here and you can write it when the question will be asked on the compiler versus the interpreter or the comparison between the different kind of language translator okay now here i have put down the differences only between the uh, compilers and the interpreters same thing that we have discussed it convert the whole code at a time it convert the code line by line it is faster now it is obvious that compiler will be faster as it is converting the same uh, converting the whole code at a time now interpreter is a slightly lower so compiler require the more memory interpreter require the less memory okay now in case of the compiler if you utilize the compiler as a language translator in case of that errors are display after entire program is checked this is now third four difference if you see the error in case of the compiler are display after the entire program is checked but in case of the interpreter errors can be display for every instruction if the first instruction get checked the error can be display at that time okay but in case of the compiler until the whole program will not get checked error will not be uh, display okay error uh, error cannot be display for that particular program now the languages where these kind of compilers being utilized c c++ java okay here also uh, you should mention the java also because the java required the compiler plus interpreter okay now interpreter uh, interpreted language are like gw basic ruby python etc etc okay so that's the difference okay now this difference you can uh, you have, i think you have written for the first unit also but in details regarding the compiler we are going to discuss in this unit so i have refer it once again okay now next important point uh, as i said in this unit we are going to focus on the what i said <coughs> the particular language translator that is our compiler okay now in that first point we should discuss in the thing but the which is the most important and this point will be beneficial for you when you go to the last year and in the last year also we have the subject special subject name of the subject are the compiler design okay so now related with the compiler first point we are discussing that is phases of the compiler okay now compiler uh, operates step by step okay it operates one operation first then second operation likewise okay so what exactly phase is nothing but so that is the reason here i have mentioned the phase is nothing but what phase is the logically interrelated operations that take the source program in one representation and produce the output in the another representation okay so that is the, what what is this the phase is nothing but what the what I, as what i mentioned here it is the logically interrelated operation logically interrelated operation in the sense what the operation which are depends on each other understood the operation which are related to each other where the source program take the where the uh, where the what happened the initially uh, it take the source program in one representation and produce the output in the another representation means what if you see the first phase of compiler the first phase of compiler take the input in the form of the source program and then the first phase of compiler will generate the output in some other form okay that is the reason what i mentioned a phase is what a logically interrelated operation that take the source program in one representation that take the source program in one representation in one represent in the, <coughs> in the sense here our source program is in the form of the higher level line okay it take the source program in one representation and produce the output in another representation so if this if you consider this is the first phase of compiler so this phase will take the source program in one representation and produce the output in the other form okay it produces the output in the other form so that is the reason uh, here the definition of the phase is written all it is a logically interrelated operation that take the source program in one form or in one representation and produce the <coughs> produce the output <coughs> in another representation okay now in the simple words you can also describe the phases as it is nothing but what different stages in the compilation process that is also called as a 
phases of the compiler also so mainly there are the two phases of the compilation broadly there are the two phases of the compilation in that first phase is the analysis phase and <coughs> second phase is the synthesis phase okay what first phase is called as analysis phase second is a synthesis phase okay so generally the first phase is considered as a machine independent and second phase is considered as a machine dependent now why what exactly the meaning of this first phase as a analysis phase the machine independent and second phase as a synthesis phase is the machine dependent that we will see when we see the when we finish the phases of all the phases of the compiler okay so in another short word the compilation uh, the uh, what exactly mean by the phases of the compiler that is also mentioned here so compiler process compilation process is part partition or divided into the number of sub process and that each of these sub process can be also referred as a phases understood so here you can see we have refer the phases as a different kind of steps in the compilation process also you can refer the phases as a number of sub process in the compilation process or you can also refer the phases of the compiler is nothing but what different kind of interrelated operation where the you know, initially the source program is represented in one form and that phase will convert that source program into the another form okay so this is the concept of phase is nothing but different sub process or different steps in the compilation process or different interrelated operation in the compilation process where each phase does what where each phase take the source program in one form in one representation and convert that source program into the another form that is the work of the each phase of the compiler okay when you see the phases in details you will get the clear now this is the general figure of the phases of the compiler and this is the most important figure in the phases of, in the phases of the compiler in the exam this figure always consists of the two or three marks okay where in, you can see regarding the each phase the details is being mentioned here name of the each phase okay so as i said the compilation process is consist of consist of what it consists of consists of the sequence of operation number of logically interrelated operation okay that we are calling it as a phase it consists of the number of sub processes understood it consists of the number of what sub processes it is consists of the different stages so that is the calling that is the uh, thing we are referring it as a phases okay so here you can see also i have mentioned each phase take the input from its previous phase okay each phase take the input from its previous stage or the previous phase okay and now each particular phase has its own representation of a source program so then each phase convert that input as a source program into the output and then that output will be given to the next phase of compiler understood now in the figure let's see now this is the source code this is the source code given as a input to the first phase of compiler so what is the first phase of compiler the first phase of compiler is the lexical analyzer okay now in the previous slide i told you the phases of the compiler mainly divided into the two types first is what the analysis phase and second is what synthesis phase okay now again again this analysis phase is divided into the three types okay and this synthesis phase being divided into the another three or four types okay so this is the dividation of this is the dividation of analysis phase so in the analysis phase mainly there are the three phases comes lexical analyzer syntax analyzer and the semantic analyzer now what exactly this that we'll see in the further section and in the synthesis phase Three, uh, three or four phases come like intermediate code generation, then machine code optimization, code generation, and again lastly the machine dependent code optimization. Okay, so each of these phases we are going to see the one by one. So you have to keep in mind analysis phase get divided into the three uh, sub phases, and synthesis phase also get divided into the three or four sub phases. Okay, so that is the point here. Now for the analysis phase, another name is given. that is called as a front end analysis phase is also called as a front end of compiler okay you should keep in mind this term because in the gate exam different kind of question being asked on the compiler okay and synthesis phase is also having another name that is called as a back end 
that is called as what backend okay now when you come when you compile our program when the compilation is happening what is exactly happening the processing of our program is happening okay processing of our program which program store store or the source program processing is happening processing in the sense what our program is getting converted in from one form into the another form then into the another form likewise until the target code will get generated okay so in this in this particular processing of our source program the different pages playing their different roles or the different pages playing their different roles when our program is getting converted from source code into the target code okay now what we only know when you do the compilation our source program which is written in the higher level language it get converted to the binary language that is only thing we know but in between these two between these two the lot of processing is happening that we don't okay up till now we don't know about lot of what exactly that different processing happen now what exactly the processing is happening between this source code and conversion of that source code into the target code now that different processing is happening with the help of these different stages of the compiler or different stages of the compiler or two different this sub process of the compilation main process okay now so what are these different stages or the stages these are nothing but the lexical analysis syntax analysis and the semantic analysis then these are the order okay now now what exactly happening in the lexical analysis syntax analysis and other things that is nothing but our point of study in this further section of this unit so here that is the reason i have mentioned each phase each particular phase each phase in the sense it can be a lexical syntax etc in case of the starting of the compilation process the first phase will take the input from its previous stage now in case of the lexical analyzer there is a no previous phase there is a what there is a source code so source code is given as a input to the lexical analyzer okay then each of these phase having their representation of source program means each particular phase convert the source program into the other form means what lexical analyzer take the source program in higher level language form and then lexical analyzer convert this higher level language code into the another form okay the lexical analyzer will generate some output here okay here you can see lexical analyzer will generate some output here and that output will be given this output will be given as a input to the next phase so output of the lexical analyzer will become the input of the next phase that is the syntax analyzer then syntax analyzer will also do the some processing the syntax analyzer will also produce some output then output of the syntax analyzer will given as a input to the next phase and this process will continue until the target code will not get generated and that is the meaning of the statement that i have mentioned here each phase take the input from its previous phase and each phase has its own representation of source program and each phase convert that source program into the output form and that output will be given as an input to the next phase of compiler okay that output of the previous phase become the input of the discuss uh, we have discussed regarding the uh, general overview of phases of compiler in this figure where our main point was what the each particular phase take the uh, input in the form of uh, some part in some particular form and try to represent or convert that input into the some other form where the output generated by each phase become the input of next phase okay so now let's see we have to see the next uh, step by step regarding each phase of the compiler okay now one more thing i should mention here now during each phase of this compiler the two important data structure being utilized first is the symbol table and next is the error handler now what why there is a requirement of the symbol table in the in the assembler also we have seen we require the symbol table in the different passes of the assembler we have seen so symbol table used to collect the different symbol which is part of your source program understood symbol table does what contain the different kind of symbol and their information related to the different symbol which is part of your source program okay and this symbol table is being uh, generated during the initial phases of the compiler okay and then get updated on after each phase and also each different phase can utilize this symbol table for processing of your source program 
also each particular phase consists of different kind of errors that next we will see and you know to detect that errors and handle that error also the one more separate module is utilized that is also referred as a error handler that is you can see the connection of error handler module with each of these phase okay now let's see the now before we actually see the first phase of compiler now now as you can see our whole discussion of this unit will be regarding this particular scenario only regarding each of these phase details we are going to see okay so before we start with the first phase of compiler that is our first phase of compiler is a lexical analysis before that we have to discuss some details other uh, we have to discuss some terms that will be help us in order to understand the all the phases of the compiler so here i have taken the one example of program statement now example is what position equal to the initial plus rate into the 60 so it is the uh, formula of something some particular things okay we don't have to do anything with that we have to just concentrate on these particular things which is written here position equal to initial plus rate into the 60 now if i ask you this is the thing suppose consider you have written in the c language <laughs> what this statement you have written in the c language for c plus plus etc this statement formula you have written Okay, you are doing some program and in that program you have written this statement now what you have written position equal to the initial plus rate into the 60. now if i ask you what is this position what is this initial what is this operator what is this this operator what is this things return etc so we know this position is nothing but the one kind of variable so variable can also be called as an identifier in the similar way initial is also one kind of identifier over the variable in the similar way, this rate is also the one kind of variable or the identifier, which we used to declare at the starting of the program. Okay. Now regarding this, what is this symbol? Now this is the operator. This is a kind of assignment operator. Okay. Now what is this? This is the plus operator. This is what? This is the multiplication operator. This is what? This is a constant or the number. Okay. So this is the information which is present with this particular statement. What? this all the kind of information is present with this statement what kind of information that also you can see here i have mentioned key regarding this statement or programming statement we have the identifier as a position we have the assignment symbol as this we have the identifier as this we have the plus operator like this we have the identifier like this we have the multiplication operator like this we have the numerical constant or the literal like this understood now when we are discussing the phases of the compiler in that phases of the compiler we have the first phase of compiler that is the lexical analyzer okay now the role of the lexical analyzer is what regarding this this particular <coughs> just as the example statement we have taken regarding this particular statement which is part of your c statement c program now what is the <coughs> role of first phase of compiler that is the <coughs> lexical analyzer to identify this kind of information what is the role to identify this kind of information which kind of information in this statement what are the identifiers what are the operators what are the constant so finding out all this kind of information related with each particular statement or regarding each particular instruction which is part of your c program that is the work of our first phase of compiler that is what lexical analyzer okay now regarding <coughs> all the <coughs> instruction which is present in your source program that all the instruction information is find out by the lexical analyzer and that information in the form of like this kind of things now here there is a no keyword so if there are any keyword present in your source program that is also identified by our first phase of compiler understood now next thing is what now when we are discussing the next one when we are going to discuss the lexical analyzer phase now during the lexical analyzer phase we have to utilize some terms and these are these terms what are these terms token pattern and the lexing what token pattern and the lexing okay still we have not started the first phase of compiler we are just discussing the terms that we are going to require there okay now if you see now first discuss about the what exactly is the lexeme is okay what what is the lexeme is 
so lexeme is what lexeme is nothing but the sequence of characters which is present in your source program what sequence of character which is present in your source program that are matching with the pattern what that are matching with the pattern okay that is called as the lexeme lexeme is what sequence of character which is part of your source program that are matching the pattern okay now what exactly is the pattern then now pattern is nothing but the rule okay simply you have to keep in mind pattern is nothing but what the rule of describing something what rule of describing something so pattern is what rule that describe that particular some some particular thing that is called as a rule now we'll see the example related which of related with each of this term first you just keep in mind what exactly the definition says so first we have says uh, seen lexeme is what lexeme is a sequence of character which are matching with the pattern okay what is the pattern pattern is what pattern is the rule simply you can keep in mind rule which is describing the particular set of string pattern is what the rule which is describing some set of string then what is the token now token is what it is a set of string over the source of alphabet which is nothing but the class or category of lexeme token is what class or category of lexeme now if you see the example that we have seen previously the statement like position position uh, what was the example that let's let me see uh, the position the position position equal to initial okay just i am in short i am writing initial plus rate into 60 so this was our statement programming statement which is part of your source program okay now now in this statement what is the role of first phase of compiler that is the lexical analysis so what is the role of lexical analyzer here regarding the processing this single statement of your source program its role is what to identify the different tokens of your source program what to identify the different tokens of your source program or the to identify the different tokens which is present in the each instruction of your source program okay now related with these terms let's discuss now what is the lexeme we have discussed lexeme is what sequence of character that matching the pattern okay now here i have mentioned these are called as the different lexemes like position is also the lexeme initial is also the lexeme rate is also the lexeme 60 is also the lexeme star is also the lexeme and this plus is also the lexeme okay and this equal to this is also the called as a lexeme itself only here some examples are written but these each this small part of your instruction small part of your statement is called as a lexeme when it will be called as a lexeme when it will match with some pattern when we call that as a lexeme when it will match with that particular pattern now what is the pattern pattern is a rule what pattern is a rule to describe something now what do you mean by the rule pattern etc now here i told you position is what position is nothing but the kind of identifier okay position is nothing but what kind of identifier or the variable now this identifier or the variable will be considered as a lexeme will be called as a lexeme when when it will match with the pattern when when it will match with the pattern now within your program whatever the actual identifiers are there whatever the actual identifiers are there that are matching with the pattern that that particular actual identifiers or the operators or constant they will called as a lexeme when they will match with the pattern okay now for example position is called as a lexeme in this example position is considered as a lexeme now we know the position is nothing but one kind of variable or the identifier now we we know that thing because we have the some kind of knowledge regarding the c language okay but in the c language there are the some rules in the c language there are the some rules what rules are there rules like which particular things in the c language we can call the identifier or which particular thing in the c language we can call the variable so in the c language there are the rules related with the writing the variable okay in the c language there are the rules related with the writing the variables or there are the rules related with the writing or declaring the identifier yes or no yes now now what are the rules in the c language related to the declaration of the variable or the identifier 
rules are what the each variable or the identifier must start with the letter rule is what each particular identifier or the variable must start with the letter and after the letter there can be a multiple number of letters or there can be a multiple number of digit also so that is the rule in case of the c language related with the related with the declaration of variable okay can i in the c language can we declare the variable starting with the one okay one and then a b c can you write the variable like this related with the c language no you cannot start the variable with the digits you have to start the variable always with the letters so that is the rule in case of the c language what is the rule that variable declaration or letter you can initialize or variable you can uh, declare if that variable should start with the letter and after the letter there can be a multiple number of letters like here the position variable is there now the p is the first letter after the p there are the multiple number of letters are there okay understood that is the reason position is called as a variable or position is called as a identifier like these related with each of these operator constant there are the rules which are being there related with each language yeah, how you can write these things in the particular language like how you can declare the variable in the c language so that rule is nothing but what pattern okay that rule is nothing but what pattern and as we have discussed in case of the c language the pattern for the identifier or the variable is what let the pattern the identifier should start with the letter and after the letter there can be a multiple number of letters or there can be a multiple number of digits and to this bracket here the star is mentioned what is the meaning of star means there can be a one letter and this one letter can be followed by multiple number of letters or digit what is the meaning of star this first letter can be followed by the zero number of letters or it can be followed by multiple number of letters or it can be followed by the digit also so that is the rule that is the rule in describe the variable and the identifier in the c language and that is called as what the pattern which is mentioned here is what pattern is a rule that describes some particular set of string or that describes some particular thing understood so if so then if this particular variable declare in your program in this statement like position equal to initial now if this if this position and the initial variable you have declare if this position and the initial variable satisfying some rule of declaration of variable then this position or this initial or this rate will be called as what this will be called as a lexeme understood that is the reason here i have mentioned lexeme is what sequence of character that matching the pattern and as an example i have mentioned lexeme as a position plus 60 okay in the similar way there are the rules for describing the identifier in the similar way there are the rules for writing the operator also there are the rules for writing the constant also if that rules if that rules if if, if the things which you are writing in your source program like you are declaring the variables you are writing the operators you are mentioning the constant if that things you are writing in the program matches with the rules okay matches with the rules then that is the matches with the rules then that particular entity which is part of your program that will be called as a lexeme okay now come to the point token so token is what it is a set of string or the source of alphabet which is nothing but class or category of lexeme now we know the lexeme in this statements are what position plus lexeme is a rate also okay lexeme is a initial also lexeme is a star also lexeme is a equal to also lexeme is a 60 also now now these things are matching with the pattern that's why we call them as a lexeme if they are not matching with the pattern then they will not become the lexeme now these are the all the lexeme we know now what is the class or category of this lexeme what do you mean by the class or category of this lexeme means what the position initial rate these are all what these are all the identifiers these are all what identifiers or the variables so class or category of this position initial rate is what identifier its class or category is what identifier okay then what is the class or category of this plus star the class or category of this plus and star is what these are the operators what is this class or category these are the operators 
now what is the class or category of this 60 the class or category of this 60 is what it is a constant it is what constant now this class or category like identifier operators constant this is nothing but called as what the tokens this is called as what the tokens so class or category of different string present in your program or class or category of different legs in which is present in your program that is called as a tokens now if you, if in the some instruction of c language we if you utilize the statement like printf what printf now in the printf and these things you write like this now this such a statement will be also processed by the lexical analyzer now what is the class or category now is this the printf is the lexem yes it is the lexem now what is the class or category of this lexem what is the printf now printf is the identifier no printf is the operator no printf is the constant no printf is what printf is the keyword so keyword is also considered as a one of the token what keyword is also considered as a one of the tokens and that is the reason here you can see the example of the token i have mentioned as identifier which is present in your program numbers or the constant operators present in your program keyword present in your program these all the th things are considered as what the tokens the same thing i have mentioned it is a set of string over the source of alphabet which is nothing but the class or category of lexem understood class or category of lexem and when when the sequence of character will form the lexem when th that will match with some pattern what is the pattern patterns are some standard rules related with the particular source language standard rules related with the particular source language means what when some source language is get created or get designed when somebody invents some source language like in case of the c language we know it is designed and developed by the dennis ritchie okay now for this c language to convert into the machine readable form we need the compiler what we need the compiler now compiler is what compiler is also the one of the system program it is what one of the system program which is written by the or which is developed by the system programmer now when the this source program as a c has to be processed then when the particular language get designed or developed then the compiler for that language also need to be designed and the developed that compiler as a system program this software also need to be designed and developed now when we are designing and developing this compiler as a system program for which language c language that time we have to mention all the rules while designing that compiler these patterns are described when when the designing of the compiler is taking place for the c language when when the design of the compiler is taking place for the c language now what is the compiler compiler the system program so when the this system program as a compiler is getting developed that time in that system program we have to mention what are the rules for describing the variable in the c language what are the rules for writing the numbers in the c language what are the rules of writing the keywords in the c language so all the details related with the c language are mentioned when the designing of the compiler is taking place and when you compile your c program through the compiler the compiler just check your source program against the rules which is being written while the designing of the compiler is taking place so if the things which are written in the c program if that different things different uh, instruction which are written in the c language if these are matching with the rules which is written while designing of the compiler is taking place then it is being said that that particular program is not having any error okay but when you write in the program some particular things you write in the program instruction you write in the program and that instruction doesn't match with the rules which are written or which are written when the designing of compiler is done then that time you will definitely get the error understood but if you write the things which are according to the rule then at the time of compilation process you will not get any errors oh okay so these things we are going to discuss during the each phase of the compiler okay so what the compiler exactly is compiler is not any kind of intelligent entity compiler is nothing but what it is it is also the system program okay and that in that system program 
each particular language is having their different compiler that is the reason we can say each particular language is having their different language translator each particular different language is having their compiler and that compiler is nothing but what kind of system program and when this system program is getting developed for example for the c language we have to write the all the rules ki c language madhe apan variable kasa declare karnar keyword kasa lehnar apan so accordingly when you write the c program and when you compile the c program that c program get check against these rules okay and which when is getting check when the you compile your program that time compiler check whatever things you have mentioned in your c program as a source program whether that according to the rule or not so that will be get checked by the compiler okay that will be checked by the compiler and accordingly compiler will generate the output output will be what which kind of errors are there in your program if all the things which you have mentioned in your source program are according to the rule then you will not get any error but if you are not follow the rules of writing the programs then you will definitely get the errors okay so so this is all about the these different things and uh, uh, compiler itself okay and first phase of compiler okay in detail also next we are going to see so you have to keep in mind what is the meaning of these different things what is the meaning of token pattern and the lexeme okay now i hope you have got the what exactly is the lexeme is a sequence of character that matching the pattern regarding our example position initial rate plus 60 each of this small part of your <laughs> statement is lexing okay now then when we call them as a when we call that particular sequence of character as a lexing if that follow some rules if that written according to the rules that already i told you and then what is the token token is the class or category of lexing then what is the class or category of plus etc that i told you identifier number operator keyword etc okay now then let's we move forward to the point of first phase of compiler so this is our first phase of compiler that you can see here the first phase of compiler now you can see the first phase of compiler is called as what the lexical analysis now let's see what the lexical analysis does now you can see when you give the source code as a input to the lexical analyzer now from the lexical analyzer the processing of your source program start when you compile the program you know within a some fraction of second you get the result of the compilation process like where you are having the error what kind of errors you are having this kind of things result you get but in between that this all the process happens in between that this different phase play their part and in that first phase we are seeing when you compile the program what exactly the first phase of compiler does okay so first phase of compiler is called as what the lexical analyzer the another different names are there for the first phase of compiler that is our linear analyzer also or linear analyze analysis is also another name for the lexical analyzer then it is also called as a scanner also it is also called as what the scanner okay so here i, I have mentioned the first phase of compiler first phase uh, of uh, compiler which is being also referred as a scanner it act as what the text scanner means the first phase of compiler read your source program line by line it read your programs line by line that is the reason first phase of compiler is also called as a scanner okay it scan your program line by line okay then what exactly it does after scanning your program line by line it divide your program into the different small parts what the lexical analyzer does after scanning the program it divide your program into the different or it breaks your program into the different small small parts okay so here i have mentioned this phase as a lexical analyzer scan the source code okay as a stream of character and represent this stream of character which we are calling as a lexeme in the form of tokens so as i said the lexical analyzer read or scan your source program and divide that source program into the different parts okay then that different parts is being identified as what tokens okay that different part of your source program which is scanned by the lexical analyzer and which is uh, which is being divided by the lexical analyzer into the small small parts that each small part is called as what the tokens now in that in the tokens you know there can be a different identifier there can be a different constant operators numbers 
keywords etc etc so what i am trying to say when your source program goes to the lexical analyzer lexical analyzer convert your source program by scanning it into the different form of tokens what the lexical analyzer does lexical analyzer convert your source program into the different form of tokens tokens are what identifiers keywords operators numbers etc etc okay so from that we can say the role of lexical analyzer is nothing but what recognition of tokens on recognition of tokens and generation of tokens you can see what the role of first phase of compiler that is the lexical analyzer is what recognition of tokens and generation of tokens how by breaking your source program into the different parts after scanning your whole source program now this whole process i have shown here when the lexical analyzer start working now you can see when the lexical analyzer start working now here only the uh, two phases i have taken now second phase of our compiler is what syntax analyzer now another name for the syntax analyzer is also the parser another name for the syntax analyzer is what the parser okay now here you can see in this scenario the first uh, here i have marked the first so what happen the parser ask now what is the role of parser that we will see the next time but in short let me check you parser is used to check syntax of your program syntax which is which you have written in your program syntax of different instruction that you have written in your program now what do you mean by the syntax now syntax of declaring the variable as a int is like this int a and followed by the a there is a semicolon so this is the syntax of declaring the variable a now when you get the syntax error when you don't write the this semicolon after the a that time what you get the syntax error and who is giving who is performing the role of detection of that syntax error that is performed by whom syntax analyzer or that is done by whom parser now initially parser request the syntax parser request the lexical analyzer what it request to get the token for what to get the token okay then lexical analyzer does what lexical analyzer read the source program what the lexical analyzer does lexical analyzer read the source program and lexical analyzer identify the tokens from your source program and then lexical analyzer send these tokens to the syntax analyzer so here from this you can understand what is the role of lexical analyzer lexical analyzer does what lexical analyzer identify and recognize the token from the source program by reading that source program by scanning that source program and send that tokens to the parser now what is the token that already i told you it is nothing but the set of string or sequence of character which is nothing but class or category of that particular different lexeme present in your program what is the lexeme the lexeme is nothing but what sequence of character that matching the pattern what is the pattern pattern are nothing but the rules that already i have told you okay now so from this you must understood what exactly the lexical analyzer okay <coughs> the same thing i have mentioned here ki how the lexical analyzer play their part the main task of lexical analyzer here you can see is nothing but what to read the input characters line by line in the code and produce the tokens what to read the input characters from the source program from each instruction of your program if there are the 100 instruction then lexical analyzer read the 100 instruction and from that 100 instruction it will try to generate and produce the tokens okay then lexical and as i can as you can say the lexical analyzer scan the entire source program your uh, source code of your program and it identify each token of your source code one by one okay so as i said lexical analyzer is also called as a scanner also so scanners are usually implemented to produce the what token so main role of lexical analyzer you should keep in mind is nothing but generation and recognition of tokens when when the request come from the parser parser is what the syntax analyzer so this workings also i have written here step by step uh, get the next token is command which is sent from the parser to the lexical analyzer on receiving this command the lexical analyzer scan the input until it find the next token okay until it find the one token then next token likewise 
and then lexical analyzer return this token to the parser you can here you can see the third step okay so there is another word which is utilized for the tokens also okay that another word is the lexical units another word is what lexical units okay so you from this you must have understood what is exactly role of lexical analyzer is what to read your source program line by line and after reading the program divide or break your program into the different parts and identify each part whether it is a token or not whether it is a forming the lexical unit or not okay and what is the token what is the lexical unit i told you it is what it is the set of string which is nothing but what class or category of the lexeme okay and lexeme is nothing but what the particular sequence of character which is present in your program itself which is matching the pattern okay now separate question being asked number of times on the role of lexical analyzer so lexical analyzer perform the different tasks like it helps to identify the tokens and make its entry into the symbol table means if the lexical analyzer understand suppose in your program you have written the this statement int a semicolon so what is the role of lexical analyzer here lexical analyzer will divide this statement to the different parts like it will divide the whole statement into the different part like like int is a one part a is another part and semicolon as another part and then it will check whether they are whether they are lexem or not uh, how the lexem or not will get decided if they are matching with the rules or the pattern okay now what exactly that uh, uh, rules pattern that in details also we see the next time okay that in short all day i told you now regarding the this a whether it is whether it is a lexem or not it will be understood from the pattern pattern is what rules of describing the variable so what is the rules of describing the variable in the c it should start with the letter so yes this is starting with the letter so then what the lexical analyzer will do lexical analyzer will see it is if it if it is a lexem then lexical analyzer can say what is lexical analyzer has to give what is the class or category of that lexem what is the class or category of this lexem a is the identifier for the variable then same way it will check the rules regarding the int then it will give the class or category of this as a keyword in the similar way it will give the class or category of this semicolon as a uh, it is being this semicolon comes under the category of operator also okay uh, this is being come under the category of operator also or this is also comes under the category of some special symbols also okay so special symbol is also uh, what you can say class or category of lexem or special symbol can also refer as a tokens also okay then uh, so that is the role now after after the lexical analyzer identify these as a tokens then lexical analyzer has to make its entry into the special data structure that is the symbol table what the next role being performed by the lexical analyzer it remove the white spaces and comment from the source program this is very important now we can see when you write the when you initialize when you write the variable in the c language like int a and the semicolon now you can see between this int and a there is a space now this space is called as what white space so removing of white space during the processing of your source program that is also the one of the role performed by the lexical analyzer now in the programmer also i used to write the different commands when you when you write the program a comment you write like this in the c language now what you come what you write in the comment like some extra information this is a like comment you can write here this is a declaration of variable correct now when the processing of program is done by the compiler and in that first phase of compiler is doing the process of uh, your source program then it never consider or think about this kind of comments so removing the white spaces and removing the comments from the source program that is also the role of lexical analyzer okay then finding out the errors of your source program and this is the obvious role reading the input character from the source program so these are the four important roles being performed by the lexical analyzer here you can see reading the input character from source program finding out the whether there are the errors in your source program then finding out the then removing the white spaces comment from your source program and mainly identifying whether the sequence of character which is present in your source program whether they are tokens or not if they are not tokens then the compiler will give you the error okay and 
what kind of error is this this kind of error is called as a lexical error this kind of error is called as the lexical error so in your program the sequence of character you have written or set of string you have written if they are not forming the tokens then the first phase of compiler will generate the error and that error is called as a lexical error okay so next thing regarding the errors i have mentioned now each of the phase that we have seen like lexical analyzer syntax analyzer semantic analyzer each particular phase is also playing the role of detection of particular errors in the source program likewise in case of lexical analyzer role of lexical analyzer is what to detection of the lexical errors okay here i have mentioned during the lexical analysis phase different kind of errors are detected and that errors are come under the category of what lexical errors okay now what is the lexical error is so lexical error is the sequence of character that does not match the pattern of any token so lexical phase error is found during the execution of the program okay so during the compilation and the execution of program so if in your program you have written some sequence of character and that sequence of character are not matching with any pattern if they are not matching with any pattern then it will be not called as a lexem okay if it not match with any pattern then it will not called as a lexem if it is not called as a lexem then how the lexical analyzer will tell you class or category of that lexem understood so that is then in that case it is considered as a lexical error so when the lexical error will come that which are the different kind of lexical error these things also i have mentioned here lexical error can be a spelling errors lexical errors can be a exceeding the length of the identifier or the numeric constant lexical error can be appearance of illegal character so these are the three different types of lexical errors are there let's see these errors in the example itself now suppose this is the program you have written in the c language now here you can see declaration of variable you have done int x equal to 10 then for comma y equal to 20 comma now this variable you have declared now is it the valid declaration of variable in the c language no because in the c language when you are declaring the variable dollar never allowed what dollar never allowed that is the reason here you will get the which kind of error lexical error and what is the type of that lexical error type of that lexical error you was illegal character you have utilized when you are declaring the variable understood another error we have seen the exceeding the length of the variable now there is a some limit on the length on the length of the variable when you declare the variable okay so if that length of the variable exceed that limit then lexical error can also comes then spelling error now in case of c language we know when you write the keyword print f it is having the spelling like this but if you write this like like this sometimes from the programmer such kind of mistake happens p i p i r n t f so this is not the valid spelling of the print f keyword so that time there you will get the kind of another error that is called as a spelling error which also comes under the category of lexical errors understood so these things i have so here you can see these are the very important things related with the lexical analysis that is the point lexical errors okay so i hope you have got this point so here only some portion of that phases of compiler i have shown first phase is lexical analyzer second is the parser or the syntax analyzer another name for the syntax analyzer is the parser okay and next is the rest of the compiler means a next phases of the compiler that in the main diagram i have shown okay so this is the things okay now this is also another way i have shown here source program then compiler compile it and generate the target program if there are the some errors in the source program it can be a lexical error syntax error etc then error message will be displayed to the programmer so same thing happens you must have experience when you are compiling the program if you are not declare the spelling of the variable correctly then you get the error okay so what is the source program it is a high level pro program like c or the pascal target program is nothing but the any kind of is the kind of machine code okay so regarding the lexical analyzer also we have discussed the same thing in being mentioned in the different way here okay during the lexical analysis and syntax analysis we have to utilize the symbol table lexical analysis make the entry of different symbols of the variables in the symbol table this symbols of the variable can be utilized by the parser next phases of the compiler 
okay during the further compilation process so here i have mentioned the sequencer analyze the read the input source program scan the program character by character and produce the sequence of tokens and that parser uh, then that sequence of token is given to the next phase of compiler that is the parser so in the initial uh, slide i told you each phase take the input in the some particular form and represent that input in the other form here lexical analyzer take the input in the form of the source code and that lexical analyzer convert that source code into the form of the tokens each particular whatever the instruction present in your source program that all the instruction get divided into the form of the tokens okay so this is the main role performed by the lexical analyzer okay so <clears throat> that's it uh, from the this lecture first lecture of our uh, uh, phases of compiler or first lecture of our third unit that is the language translator okay now if i give you the example like this now if i ask you uh, if you have the example like this uh, if i say this is the example like int abc semicolon now if i ask you tell me the lexeme out of this statement tell me the uh, q uh, tokens out of this statement then what are the lexeme so int is the lexeme then abc is the lexeme and semicolon is the lexeme when you call them as a lexeme when it will match with the pattern now regarding the patterns and rules how how the patterns are written how the rules are written that next lecture will see here you just keep in mind if these different parts of your this statement matching with the pattern then they are all called as a lexeme next question what what is the which are the tokens in this statement now tokens are nothing but what int int what is the class or category of int lexeme keyword is the one token then what is the class or category of this abc class or category of abc is what it is the identifier or the variable what is the class or category of this semicolon it is a special symbol or it is considered as a terminating symbol also terminating symbol or the special symbol so these are nothing but the tokens keywords identifier special symbols or the terminating symbols etc okay so that's it from this lecture next in the next lecture uh, we will continue with the lexical analysis also in in the next lecture we will see how the rules or patterns are written and uh, what is the role of regular expression in the lexical analysis phase of compiler also we will see what is the role of finite automata in the lexical analysis phase of the compiler so today the summary of our study is nothing but what phases of compiler and in that lexical analyzer what the lexical analyzer does lexical analyzer does the recognition and generation of tokens by reading or scanning your source program and giving that tokens to the next phase of compiler that is the syntax analyzer okay if you have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section thank you all of you